Welcome to Taisha's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make miso ramen. Ramen is probably nowadays pretty well known in the world as one of the typical Japanese food. There are a lot of ramen restaurants nowadays, or you might see in anime, or you might know from this little instant ramen noodle package. But if you want to make it from scratch, it's really hard work, it takes a lot of time. So this recipe that I found on the internet, it only takes about half an hour, and it's really easy to make. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for miso ramen. I have ground pork, I also have clove of garlic and a piece of ginger. Then for the topping, I have here bean sprouts. And if you don't have sprouts, you could use other vegetable like cabbage or napa or spinach or whatever vegetable you may have in the fridge. And then two scallion, one and a half for the soup and one for the condiment. Then I also have butter. Some people like to put butter in the miso soup. You may find the matching of miso and butter rather strange, but they match actually pretty well together and butter kind of rounds up the edge of miso. And then I also have capellini for the noodle. And as you may know for my other video of yakisoba, if you cook pasta with baking soda, it'll kind of imitate the flavor of ramen. Then for the soup, I have miso, soy sauce, brown sugar, and sesame oil, and chili bean sauce. It's called tobanjan. If you don't have this, you can use any other chili sauce, or if you don't like it spicy, you can make it without it. Still, if you want to have it spicy, then you could just substitute it with regular chili, although it won't have the same kind of depth to the flavor. And if you don't have miso, then you could make it without miso and instead substitute it with soy sauce then it won't be miso ramen, but instead shoyu ramen, but still, surely it'll taste good. So let's prepare the ingredients. I'm going to just ground up the garlic. And then ginger. So we're gonna cut up the scallion. So we're gonna use one and a half for the soup. I'm gonna take the bottom off and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna cut this in half. And then here it doesn't have to be very fine because just kind of pieces like this. And then the rest, then I'm going to cut these in thin slices for the condiments. And that comes at the very end. Let's start cooking. Here in this pot, we're going to make the soup. And I'm going to heat it to high and put some sesame oil. And while we cook the soup, here I'm gonna pre-cook the bean sprouts. So the pan has been heated. I'm going to put in first the ground up garlic and ginger. And then right away the cut up scallion. I'm gonna bring the heat to medium so that it doesn't burn. So once the scallion has gotten a little bit soft, I'm gonna put in the meat. So the water has come to a boil, I'm gonna put in the bean sprouts. So once this comes to a boil, it's finished. 
So I'm gonna drain it. So this is finished. So once the meat is all cooked, I'm going to put in here Pobanjam. About a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, depending on how spicy you like. When you're making uh, anything spicy, you want to fry the chili because actually the chili flavor is oil based, not water based. So if you just put in water, the uh, spiciness doesn't really come out so much. So you want to kind of fry it with oil when you have chili. And then here I'm going to put in one tablespoon of soy sauce. Now I'm going to put in here one and a half cup of water. While we wait for the soup to be made, I'm going to cook here about three cups of water for the pasta. So the soup is boiling, I'm going to add in here about a teaspoon of sugar. And then I'm going to add one and a half tablespoon of miso. And then I'm going to turn off the heat. So I'm going to have a little taste. Mmm, oh perfect. So the water has come to a boil. I'm going to add in first baking soda. About half a teaspoon. I'm going to put about that much of pasta. We're going to time it for three minutes. So I'm going to turn the heat to medium and I'm going to heat the soup again to high. So three minutes has passed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the pasta water to the bowl that I'm going to serve ramen noodle because this is going to warm up the bowl. And then, then I'm going to put in the noodle. So just as it's finished, the soup is also finished. I'm going to put in the bean sprouts on the side, like so. And the condiments of scallion. Looks great. Let's eat. Itadakimasu! Oh, that looks delicious. Mmm. So, warning, I'm going to slurp. If you don't like the slurping noise, please skip this part. Mmm. Mmm, this is good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is really rich. So there's a lot of flavor to this whole soup. There's meat, there's the scallion, both are full of umami, and then adds to that miso and soy sauce and this tobanjan, the spicy sauce. Oh, it's really good. Mmm. Mmm, mm. oh the soup is great. So I'm gonna put in the butter. I actually just didn't like the concept of putting butter in the miso ramen. But as I tried it here, when I'm outside of Japan, I realized, oh, the miso and butter actually matches really well. So, mmm, yep, definitely. Butter adds another layer to the soup. Mmm, really good. So 
So you might be wondering why I have rice with ramen, but for those who've been to Japan, you know would know a lot of people do eat ramen with rice. A lot of ramen restaurants serve ramen together with rice. Mm. And this is miso ramen, and of course miso is going to match rice perfectly. Mm. This is just really good. Gosotomashita! Ah, that was really delicious and really filled me up and warmed me up. So I'm sweating a little bit. So this recipe is a little bit more complicated and requires a little more ingredients than my other videos, but it's really worth the effort. And I hope you try it at home yourself. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye.